Hey kids, welcome to lesson 13, Introduction to Arrays, the last lesson. Good job on getting here, kids, but we're going to keep going. Your app should now be fully functional. Great job. There, of course, is plenty of new pieces of functionality to add. If you have time, feel free to make any of the improvements you wish. Here are some different ideas. Allow users to append items rather than add them at the current location. Give the user the ability to remove the item at the current index. This can be a little tricky if you remove the item at the end of the list, so see if you can account for that. Only add words if they are not blank, and improve the appearance of the app. Well, I think we're going to take care of these four. You can improve the app appearance any way you like. This is the part where you can be as creative as you want, and I really, really encourage you to do that. So what are we gonna to do today? Well, we are first going to add items at the end of the list instead of right in the middle. This is very helpful. Think of just when you're saving your own files, you wanna look at the newest, or you wanna have the newest grouped, instead of it just mixed in throughout the list. So this is just something to help us out. Then of course, we all make errors. If you've watched any of these videos, you know I make them all the time and that's okay. You know I say this in class all the time that the master has failed more times than the apprentice has even attempted to try. Don't worry about that. We all fail and we just wanna make sure that we have an ability to change that. And we're gonna add a remove button to do that. And finally, I know none of you kids here would ever spam a site but we want to make it so you actually have to type something into the add bar down here for it to actually be added. Otherwise, you could just sit here and click add, and then you could add a million different spots with nothing actually in it. That, that isn't helpful towards anybody. Oh, this sounds very fun. This can be a little tricky, but since we've been working this code little by little, I don't think it's going to be too bad for us. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to append items. And where is that gonna be? Well, we're gonna look for the location where we add things from the user. And if we go down here, this right here is our on event where the add button is. I didn't do a very good job commenting, so I'm just gonna start right now. This is going to be add feature right here. If we look down here at our insert item, you can see it asks for our list or our array in the index or position we want to add to. If we go to append item, you can see it just appends item right to the end of the array. So this is just a little easier for us. Let's go ahead and just take this line of code out right here and let's add append item. What array are we appending? Well, we're still on our favorite thing. So it's fave thing. What we're appending here, if you see, the first one is list, the second one is our item. We want to append whatever our item is. And what do we want? If we look up here, we have a variable new item, which is getting whatever the user is inputting already. We can just call that variable, and it should append whatever that is. So I can just type new item. And this is essentially doing the same thing as our insert did. The only difference is the insert inserted it into a specific location wherever we were. This is always adding it to the end. This is just saying, hey, add an item to your array favorite things. What do you want to add? What item? Well, I'm just pulling that from my new item. So anything this variable here has will be called here, and then that will actually be added. Let's give this a try. Hit run. One of my favorite things, school. And I'm going to add it, and this should go to four. Two, three, four is school. I'm going to go back in the middle. Let's add another thing, a, another favorite thing of mine, my Nintendo Switch. Add that. So our video games is still two, three, four, school, five. The Switch got added to the end. 
That means five of five always getting added to the end. That looks like that takes care of that one. Now let's give the user here the ability to get rid of something. Because if you look at this, I really have video games as one. And really my Nintendo Switch is more of my favorite thing than my video games. Video games is kind of generic. So I want to get rid of that. And the user probably does too. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to go in design mode here. We're going to have to add a new button. So I'm going to drag a new button in here. This button ID is going to be called remove button. The text on it is going to be remove. I think the background color should probably be a black to go along with everything else. Let's just increase this font size a little. Where do we want to put it? Uh, let's put it on the opposite side here so the user really has to go over there to get rid of it. That's my button there. What we have to do is we now have to point to that button. Where are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to create a new one. I'm going to take a minute here and just comment out some of this code because we're going to do adding a little more here. And there's just two things I really had to take care of, the previous button and the next button, everything else um, really has already been updated. So now I'm just know when I'm adding stuff, it's where it's going to be at. That looks pretty good to me. What do we want to do here? We want to have the ability to click this button. That means we're going to need some sort of event handler. This is going to be my remove button. We're going to go to our controls here and we're just going to drag in an event. And what do we want? Well, when this remove button is clicked, we want something to happen. What do we want to happen? Well, the first thing we want to do is remove that thing, right? We want to get rid of it. How are we going to get rid of it? Well, if we go down here, we have our remove item button we can drag in. So let's drag in our remove button. What are we getting rid of? Well, the list or the array in, which is my fave or fave things. And the, the next thing is the index, where are we at? We're gonna to call to our current index because that's where we're always at. So we can go current index. Spelled correctly. That means I should be able to remove whatever's there. Let's give this a try. Run, let's go to and add something. We'll call it TVs, just spelled wrong. Add that to our list. Let's go to that. We don't like it. Let's hit remove. Well, our error here is saying our parameters three is larger than the number of items in the list. Looks like we have an issue with our list. What does that mean? Well, that means we're going to have to add some sort of statement into there. What kind of statement? This one's going to have to be an if statement. What I want to see in here is if my current index is going to be greater than my fave things dot length. And we're going to put this as minus one because we want the end. Think back to our previous lesson. We want to set current index back equal to zero. We have a little error here. That is a spelling error. Fave thing is my array, not fav thing. What this is saying now is if I remove an item, if that current index 
is greater than the length, we just want to set it back to zero. So we're checking the total length and just setting it back to zero. I think this is going to work. Let's hit run and see. It looks like I am getting another warning. What could this be? Well, what I'm doing here is I am saying on the event, I hit the remove button, remove the current item. But then it goes if the current item is greater than the list length, we're going to reset the current index back to zero. This is really contradictory how it is. I really need another if statement in here to make this complete. How do I want to say this? I want to drag an if statement in here. If what? If my fave things list is greater than zero, that's just saying if there's something there to delete, then I want you to remove the item. And if that happens, and the current index is greater than the list length, which it will be, we're going to reset the current index back to zero. I needed two if statements for this to work. So on the event something happens, what has to happen? Well, this has to happen, and this has to happen right here. We need to remove the item. And we need to remove the item as long as the list isn't empty. And then we need to set our current index back to zero. Let's get rid of our debug reset. Before I hit run, I noticed I have a little triangle here. My thing is fave thing, not fave thing. All right, let's try it now. Reset run. Add something here go to that thing and remove it. Nothing's happening, why not? All we took care of here was the internal parts. So we removed it, we just didn't update anything on the screen to tell the user that. And that's what we have to handle next. For example, if I hit next or last here, because there's nothing to update, we are gonna get an error. Here we are saying the same thing. And this is going up to our set text part. So that is telling me that my hypothesis is correct, that we need to also update our display to do that. Let's clear this out here. And I am still under my remove button down here. And really, this is going to be inside my large on event function I'm still in. So I'm going to keep my brace, parentheses, and semicolon down there. We're going to kind of repeat what's up here. If fave thing dot length is in fact greater than zero, we want to update display. And those are our blank parentheses. If I hit this, this should now, as long as there's something in my array, it should update the display. Let's test this out. Run. Let's add another nonsense word. Add, next, 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 remove. There we go. It updated our display. So we had to update a display. Right now, we can actually delete almost everything except that last one. Let's go ahead and add an else statement in here and let's take care of that part. We can't delete it because right now our if statement says if the fave thing length is greater than zero, then we can update the display. We need an else statement to take care of this last little one. 
what are we going to put here? Well, else we need our brace. We are going to set text to our area right here. And this area is text area. And we're setting text area now to just something blank, nothing, and ending that. We also want to set the text of our array tracker there. And we want to set that label to zero of zero and our little semicolon. We're not done yet. We need a couple of braces. We need one more closing brace for our else statement. And then we left. Looks like we have a couple errors here. This should be a brace, not a bracket. If we come up here, set text, I forgot a parentheses at the start of that. Text area. This one, array tracker, we forgot a quotation at the beginning of that, and a quotation at the beginning of that one. And finally, we have an else statement up here, two if statements nested, so we need to get rid of this if brace right there. So it should say if the favorite things dot length, the length of the list is greater than zero, remove fave things at the current index. If the current index is greater than the length, set the current index back to zero. If the fave thing length is greater than zero, meaning there's something there, update the display with what uh, we have currently set up in update display. Else or otherwise, set the text of the text area blank and then set your tracker to zero of zero. Ooh, that was a lot. Let's see if this actually works. Let's hit run. Let's add something fun here. School and coding. One of five, we go to next. Let's hit remove. Four of four, we can hit remove. And we get down to zero of zero. That right there is our first two. Our last one here is going to be adding words as long as they are not blank, because you kids would never spam anything. Where is that going to be updated? That is going to be in our add button event here. And what do we want to put? We probably want to get the user input first. I know at least I need the user to hit the add button and to get the text. Let's do something simple. Let's add just another if statement. Let's say if new item is, let's look at our math functions here. Remember we have an equality operator that says not equal to. Let's say if it is not equal to just something blank, if it does that, what do we want it to do? Well, we really want to set the text down here back to the blank. So we just want to go to set text, set text of what? The user interface right here to blank. Well, we actually already have that. If we look up here, what we did was we created an if statement. And we need to wrap that if statement with everything inside there. And this all needs to be within our larger event handler. So I just need to add a little brace down there. That means if a new item is blank, we're going to set the text there to blank. Let's see if this works. Let's hit run. Let's add school. We got one of four. Oh, it's still adding. Reset run. If we come off the bat, it won't do anything until we add one first. 
looks like our code is working the way it should now. So looking back up here, we allowed the user to append items to the end instead of the current location. We gave the user the ability to remove items and we only added words if they were not blank. If you wanna take on an extra added challenge here, you could add it so anytime a word is blank, it wouldn't add. We got three of those done. Like I said, I'm gonna leave the art to you kids because you kids are the creative ones. I really look forward to seeing what you created. I know this was a really, really tough lesson and arrays are very hard to understand. I know I struggled with them when I first learned coding, but you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. I don't think code.org wants anything else from this lesson. You're going to submit it to me and I look forward to seeing it. Good job, kids. And I'll see you on lesson 14.